name is Adriana Mamazo, and I am a PhD student here at the Faculty of Education. And I'm here to present my doctoral dissertation project, uh, which has to do with the use of multi-level models uh, to assess school effectiveness. Now, in the past few years, there has been a rising interest in this topic, which is evidenced by the, by the increase of large-scale models that propose models to explain academic performance and school effectiveness. Uh, standardized tests are a very good tool to perform these kind of studies, and nowadays we have a lot of information to work with. Uh, we have standardized tests at an international level, such as PISA, which is the one we are using, uh, but also at a European level, and in the case of Spain and other countries, we also have these kinds of tests at a national or regional level. <coughs> Now, these standardized tests uh, usually have uh, this structure. We have the academic performance test, uh, which is used to measure the competence level of the students in competences such as mathematics, uh, reading, etc. And we also have uh, context questionnaires, which provide information on, on the context of the students and the schools. <coughs> now, this context information uh, can be divided into three main components. Uh, we have student context factors uh, such as their gender, their immigration origin, uh, their socioeconomic background. Uh, we also have school context factors such as school resources, uh, the rate of males and females in the school, uh, whether the students have repeated a grade or not. And we also have other kinds of factors uh, that we can say that they can be intervened such as the relationships of the school with the community, uh, the, met the methodology they use, or the organizational practices. Now, our research aims to take this information from the PISA report and uh, develop multi-level models that will allow us to eliminate the, the influence of context factors in PISA scores so that we can assess uh, the school effectiveness. Uh, we are going to do this within the autonomous community of Castilla and Leon, and we are going to uh, study the factors uh, which are associated uh, with uh, high and low performing students and schools. But uh, why is this important? Uh, we are going to see an example. This is a <laughs> typical regression diagram in which each dot is a school. Uh, now, these dots uh, inform us of the, of the school's PISA score and also of their average uh, socioeconomic level. Uh, now, normally, when someone wants to point out uh, which the best schools are, according to PISA, uh, they will say the schools with the highest scores. Um, this would seem logical, but we're going to see why it's not really. Uh, so if we wanted to take the, the highest score schools, we would just, in this diagram, we would draw a horizontal line at, for example, uh, um, OECD average level, and we would just take the schools above that line. But what would happen <coughs> if we took uh, the context as a factor in this uh, selection? Well, the selection of the schools would, would change dramatically. As you can see, uh, we would not draw a horizontal line, but a line parallel to the regression line, and the schools selected would be the ones in the green rectangle. Now, this is schools don't necessarily have the highest scores, but they are the schools that have the most difference between uh, their expected score, which would be the line of regression, and their real score. This means these are the schools that have made the greatest efforts with the resources that they have. Now the same could be said uh, if you want to select the least effective schools. Uh, as you can see, there are schools that have uh, a fairly high PISA score, but uh, they are considered uh, not effective because they, with the resources that they have, they are not doing a really great job. Uh, our study has, has two main phases. Uh, first, a quantitative one in which we will uh, select the schools based on the multi-level models, and then a qualitative one in which we will conduct an in-depth study of these schools. For the quantitative phase, our sample would be the schools and students selected for the PISA report 2015 in Castilla and Leon in Spain. Uh, we will do a transversal study because PISA does not provide uh, information for the same schools over the years. And we will use uh, hierarchical linear models. 
uh, from this phase, we expect to sort the schools according to their value added and to select the most and least effective schools. For the qualitative phase, uh, our sample will be the schools we selected in the previous phase, and we will conduct a case study with interviews, group discussions, and observation. Uh, we seem that the study will be uh, on different factors of the school, such as school leadership, uh, student assessment, time management practices, or guidance and counseling. Uh, what we expect to come out of, of this phase are three types of factors. Uh, practices that are clearly associated with school effectiveness, practices that are clearly associated with school ineffectiveness, and we will have some practices that uh, are seemingly irrelevant, or it is unclear how they are related to, uh, to school effectiveness. Uh, what's the, the end goal of our research? Well, we, we want to try to make uh, the stakeholders in education, uh, such as school heads, policymakers, and teachers, I uh, want to help them understand the concept of school effectiveness and its importance, and which factors can help or hinder it. Uh, now, my dissertation right now is in the, in the previous phase because uh, up until December this year, we won't have the data from the PISA 2015. So we are um, conducting a literature review and preparing the database because our database has a well over 500 variables. So it is pretty important that we get to know them. Um, and I will, to finish off, I would like to talk about some of the limitations of this research. As I said, we are conducting a transversal study because we do not have a longitudinal data which would be better uh, to conduct this kind of research. And also we are working with a sample of the population instead of working with the whole of the population because uh, PISA uh, does a sampling of the population, so this is also a limitation. Thank you very much for listening.